The average person can run a marathon in four hours, 26 minutes, and 33 seconds. At least that's what shape.com says, and other sites have times that are around the same. And I'm gonna try and run faster than that so I can be considered an above average marathon runner. And let me clarify, people that run marathons aren't average. In fact, out of all the people in the world, only 0.01% of people have ever ran a marathon. So it's impressive for anyone that attempts and or finishes one, no matter what their time is. My one rule for this challenge is to complete the marathon in under four hours, 26 minutes, and 33 seconds. My personal Personal challenge is to try to complete it in under four hours. Currently, I would break it down like this. Four hours and 26 minutes is our average time. Casual runners take longer than that. Competitive runners are in the two and a half to three and a half hour range. And the elite runners are between two hours and two and a half hours. My full disclaimer is that I began running in 2020 and since then I've ran three marathons and one ultra marathon. But out of all that, while impressive, I would consider the times for those uh, below average. And this time I chose one of the flattest marathon races near me so I could try to achieve that above average runner status. Medium. All good to go. So I put in all the time and all the training and ran a total of 500 plus miles over 16 weeks and actually used the training plan called Runna and it helped me feel more prepared than I have in the past. And while I'm not sponsored or anything like that, I just like using the app. And so if you want to try it out for yourself, it's great for if you're beginner, intermediate, advanced, elite, whatever, you can click the link in the description below. I would compare using the training plan to something like learning a new instrument. You have to put that time and that effort into learning that instrument to become a better musician because let me tell you, there were times where I did not want to run, especially during my 20 mile run that was like, I think it was like 20 degrees outside. It was a rough day. The best way I know how to describe the moment before you start a marathon is a mixture of determination, excitement, nervousness, and the feeling to have to use the bathroom because you're so hydrated. At least that's how I felt. Here we go, about to start in about 10 minutes. And you it's raining, my feet are already wet, socks are already wet. This dread's you getting my nerves, but it's all good. As I was stretching and everything, I also saw the four hour pacer and I was like, I'm staying far away from that dude. I think what also makes it cool is that there were a bunch of other people around you that had more or less the same feeling. And then before it's time to start, it's like taking a deep breath in, blocking out everything. And as you're getting ready to exhale, it begins. Okay, maybe it's not that serious. Something that people often get caught up with and one of the hardest things to do is not starting a race out too fast. And I knew at minimum what my pace needed to be to get a four hour and 26 minute marathon or even a four hour marathon. But that was all possible if I did all that without any bathroom breaks. You probably can't tell, but it's rain. Three miles. I got this ever so slightly cramped on my left side and I don't know why but we gonna push through. Let me just say that running in the rain is a special thing. It kind of sucks at first, but then you're kind of like, it is what it is. At mile three, I was kind of cruising at 8.55 minute per mile. And I ended up thinking to myself, like if I'm sitting here complaining, we're all running in this rain together. So like everybody else is experiencing the same thing. So why complain? I'm sure there's a lesson in that somewhere. Got a 10K in. Feeling better, I need the bathroom. And I feel a lot better after peeing. But I'm feeling good about my time so far. I saw the 345 pacer run by, and there's no way I'm catching up there. I was drinking water and Gatorade at every single aid station. And let me tell you, when I used the bathroom the first time, I swear I was peeing for like a minute straight. <laughs> but that also meant that I was really, really hydrated. But at the same time, I also didn't want to get overhydrated because then the next 10 minutes after using the bathroom, I literally had to go again. And it felt the same way as if I hadn't used the bathroom in a long time. Like it was bad. Like your boy's bladder was screaming. Hey, steady face, looking good. Officially passed. Halfway. Hope I don't regret these words, but I'm feeling good. A little bit, a little cramping, I'm not gonna lie, but we'll see. Okay, in case you're unfamiliar with this term, there's something in running or racing even called a negative split, which in simple terms is just running the second half of the race faster than the first half. And this is what I was trying to do to stay above average. I even made a playlist with songs that had a higher BPM or rhythm for the second half that kind of helped motivate myself. One of the best things about running these races are the people. You have all of these people cheering on you. They're complete strangers. You have no idea who they are, but it's even better when you see the, that group of people or that person that you know. So when I saw Abigail and our son at mile 15, and even though overall I was feeling good, it gave me an extra boost that I didn't know I needed, honestly. Oh. 
I'm not looking forward to mile 17. This is the moment where you gotta, you gotta push through the mental game. Things are hurting, but you gotta push through that. Still going strong, I'm feeling good. Calf is a little sore, but we're still going. During a marathon, most people start cramping, hurting, or even slowing down between miles 17 and 21, give or take a mile. This is what people often call the wall, or some people call it bonking, and it's different for every runner and every single race. It can happen during a marathon, a half marathon, a 10K, 5K, your morning walk. I mean, it can happen anytime. I personally wanted to be prepared as much as possible, and one of those ways was through nutrition. You don't realize how much sodium, how much sugar, how much, how many calories you're losing throughout these races. And so I use this nutrition brand called Spring Energy. And I personally use Spring Energy because it sits well with my stomach specifically. It really depends on you and your stomach and how your body responds, because I took one like every three and a half to four miles or 30 to 40 minutes but somebody might take one earlier or it just depends what, how your body's feeling. And at mile 16, I took this flavor because according to their site, it's great for endurance activities. But I took a chance because I had never tasted that flavor. I never used that flavor or anything like that. And because there was different ingredients technically, I didn't know how well it would sit in my stomach. So I took a chance doing that during the race because for all I know, it could have led me straight to the bathroom. <laughs> Mile 20, this is when people arguably say the real race starts, because it's just you and six more miles. Because even though people are cheering you on, it can feel like the longest six miles of your life. You're battling yourself physically and mentally, or even spiritually if you need to go that route. And I personally was determined not to let that happen because it's happened to me so many times in the past. So much so that mile 20 was actually my fastest mile during the entire race, which is crazy. But I was telling myself, assuming that my pace was nine minutes per mile, I was like six more miles, 54 minutes, five more miles, 45 minutes, four more miles, 36 minutes, you know, stuff like that to kind of just keep myself going. Here he comes. Here you go, daddy. Hey, can you yeah, can you throw it at me? <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Love you. <laughs> Basically, one mile left. Last push is getting difficult, but you got to keep going. And the main thing that was on my mind was like, A, I'm about to be above average, assuming I just finished the race, and B, that four hour guy is somewhere behind me, and that's a good thing. So as I turned the final corner and saw the time, I almost cried happy tears because not was I only above average, but I was officially a sub four hour marathoner. And honestly, it was just a reminder that if you believe you can do something and put in the time and the work and learn from any mistakes you make along the way, you'll do it. Or you could just sum it up like they did. You can and you will. At the end of the day, unless you're first overall or top three, it doesn't matter if you finished a race in two and a half hours or seven and a half hours you're getting the same medal because you finished and that's something that you can be proud of. Yeah. Sunday morning fuels quickly turns to afternoons. It's like that I can barely go and catch it. Kinda how I feel with you. Cause you